Hello, this is Lauren Brantley Books, and I'm here today with a review of The Deep by River Solomon. This story has a really interesting beginning. The original concept was created by a techno-electric duo known as Drexia. From that idea, the rap group The Clippings made a song about it. Then River Solomon took the song and turned it into a book. The story of The Deep is that during the transatlantic slave trade, pregnant African slaves were thrown overboard by the thousands for being seen as sick and disruptive cargo. While the mothers drowned, the children of these slaves were miraculously transformed in the womb and born as mermaids called the Wajinru. The Wajinru have existed for 600 years, since the first days of the transatlantic slave trade. The Wajinru have an interesting relationship with memory. They sacrifice their memories to live lives full of immediate bliss. It is the ultimate form of living in the moment, sacrificing one's entire history as to not be burdened by the past. However, that past has to go somewhere, and that somewhere is the historian. Basically, the historian is the one Wajinru who holds all their kind's history within their own memory. They remember it so the rest of the Wajinru don't have to. The current historian is a 34-year-old Wajinru named Yetu, and being the historian is slowly killing her. Yetu feels immense physical and psychological pain from being the historian. Having the history of her entire people has caused Yetu to lose all sense of self to the point where she is barely keeping herself alive. The book begins with Yetu nearly getting killed because she is so lost in her people's memories. She essentially has been driven to the brink of madness by this burden, and yet to a certain if she keeps this up, she will die one way or another. Once a year, the entire Wajinru people gather in one place for something called the Remembrance. The Remembrance is when the Wajinru allow the historian to share their history with them and psychically transfer the memories back to them. Then for a few days, they experience the history like Yetu does year round, before the historian takes the memories away for another year. This ritual allows the Wajinru to live their lives free of the past, but it comes at the cost of the historian's well-being, who must always carry 600 years of history alone inside their head. This year, when Yetu performs the remembrance, she's reached her breaking point. She knows being the historian is slowly killing her, and in a moment of rebellion, she decides she will not take the memories back after she's transferred them to her people. So after transferring the memories to her people, Yetu flees for her life, leaving her people drowning in 600 years of history. She has no idea what the ramifications will be for abandoning her people mid-remembrance, but she knows she won't survive another year as the historian. So to save herself, she leaves the Wajinru behind. She flees and ends up going all the way to the surface where she encounters several humans. Yetu's main encounter is with a human named Uri. And like Yetu herself, Uri has a complicated relationship to her people's history. Uri is the last of her ethnic group, after the rest of them perish of an unspecified illness. Her belief is that one's history, their heritage, is what makes a person themselves. Yetu argues with Uri about this, as Yetu wants to leave behind the history of the Wajinru once and for all. There's a good question being poised about how much weight we give our history and how we handle remembering our past. As someone from the African diaspora, our history can be a big thing to bear. In school, most of what I learned about African American history was tragic and even traumatizing. I learned about the neutralities of the transatlantic slave trade and slavery, then about Jim Crow and segregation, and the struggles of the civil rights movement. These are traumatic, heavy things to reconcile, but as a black woman, it's something I have to deal with and reconcile in myself. No matter how brutal it is, it's still part of my history. The Deep reimagines one of the most tragic parts of the slave trade, the fact that pregnant people were thrown overboard because they were seen as a burden into something beautiful. The idea that the children of these drowned people were burnt, born as mermaids and formed their own utopia deep below the sea. There's this wonderful idea that since babies are basically surrounded by fluid in the womb, the ocean taught these unborn babies how to breathe water before being born. It's never specified how this happens other than that it's magic. And believing that magic is comforting as a black woman, that instead of dying, these children of these drowned Africans got the chance to be reborn into something totally new. This positive reimagining of our history is one of the core tenets of a literary movement known as Afrofuturism. Afrofuturism is a genre that's basically a blend of fantasy, sci-fi, and history, and is used to explore the Black experience and tries to reconnect us with our heritage as displaced people of Africa. It's a genre that celebrates our history and turns it into something beautiful, and the Deep is a shining example of that. Movements like Afrofuturism and Afrofantasy are really powerful tools of healing. They take our history and celebrate it, while giving us hope for a brighter future. They also provide us with a way to escape from our racial trauma and inspire us with visions of something positive. It's a pretty dire need for more black escapism, and Afrofuturistic likes the books like The Deep satisfy that need. At the same time, it also brings to light one of the most barbaric but least talked about aspects of the Middle Passage, 
that pregnant people were tossed overboard by the thousands. I know I personally was never taught in school that pregnant people were discarded like this, and it's sad that it took a work of fiction to teach me this aspect of my history. In this way, the deep gives a voice to those who can no longer speak for themselves. It assures us that these people who were murdered this way are not forgotten. The Deep is necessary reading. It is a moving reimagining of Black history with a dash of undersea fantasy that makes it completely unforgettable. I highly recommend this book and think it satisfies a great need. There's also a woeful dearth of Black mermaid stories. A few other stories about Black mermaids I know are Skin of the Sea by Natasha Bowen, The New Moon's Arms by Nala Hopkins, and Mother of the Sea by Zeta Elliott. Be sure to check out these books as well for more great stories about Black mermaids. Thank you so much for watching this review of The Deep by River Solomon. I am Lauren Brantley Books, and please let me know if you have any suggestions of what I should review next. If you want to hear more reviews from me, feel free to subscribe, and also a like on this video goes a long way. Thank you, and I will see you in the next review.